X-ray gum. How does this work, Professor Quack? Ah, that's my new and improved beef-flavored X-ray gum. I'll explain how it works. You take a stick out, put it up against something beefy, move it around, and then you can see the yucky stuff inside. The best part of all is, when you're done, you can chew the gum. It actually has a very refreshing beefy flavor. You know, four out of five dentists prefer x-ray gum for their patients who need x-rays. A duck needs his fiber. What's in this egg-shaped container, Professor Quack? This is a little gadget I call the Spy Putty. What you do is open the cute little egg container and spread the putty on whatever you want to make a copy of. Press down and then peel the putty off. You have a perfect copy. Hmm, that looks rather silly. I know what you're thinking. You think that the spy putty looks a lot like that silly stuff they sell in toy stores. What you don't know is that I thought of it first. <laughs> Those duplicitous duplicators stole my idea! Now, if you don't mind, Mr. Udderly, I'm going to need to use this X-ray gum to take a look at those four stomachs of yours. This isn't going to hurt, is it? Because I get sort of dizzy when I think about pain. In fact, just saying the word Pain makes me want to. Professor Quack, your X-ray gum works perfectly. I can see everything inside Mr. Udderly's gut. Do you want me to slap you, Spy Fox? Pardon me. The X-ray gum only works on something beefy. You know, if I took the Asti Spumoni, I could be getting much better mileage. And what's wrong with walking? Don't you care about the environment? Oh, you spies are getting way too dependent on these gadgets. Nothing like recycling. Good for the spy business. Good for the environment. It appears to be a shoe. What is this gadget, Professor Quack? That's the night vision shoe. Oh, one of my most ingenious inventions. <laughs> if you happen to find yourself in a dark place, all you do is strap the shoe onto your head, and then you can see in the dark. How illuminating. Yes, and it has excellent arch support. What handsome cufflinks. Are they a gadget as well, Professor Quack? Those are the suction cufflinks. I am very proud of them. They are tiny suction cups that allow you to climb across non-porous metal surfaces. The perfect fashion accessory for the well-dressed spy. Mmm, that was a tasty one. Is this coin really a spy gadget, Professor Quack? Ah, that's the spy trap. Let me explain how it works. It looks like an ordinary coin, like you might find in the street. But if you need to track three or more bad guys, the coin explodes and a net shoots out. It traps the naughty spy enemies. Nice, huh? Heads I win, tails they lose. 
I'm going to lose my appetite if I keep this up. Mmm, it looks like a delicious snack. May I eat this, Professor Quack? Okay, that's the cheese and safe cracker kit. It will help you get into almost any safe in the world. I won't explain exactly how it works, because it's very scientific and complicated. Trust me when I say it works like a charm. And it tastes great in soup. Yeah, and this paper isn't half bad. Welcome to the Trinket Emporium. My name is Gilbert. How may I be of service to you? Oh, honourable visitor to this our dear island home. I'm not sure yet. I was just noticing your fine selection of trinkets. Sir, I think that you will find we offer much more than mere trinkets. We pride ourselves in having the island's finest selection of rare and hard-to-find collector items and antiquities. Excellent. One never knows when one will be struck with an unquenchable desire to indulge in a blatant act of bourgeois consumerism. Our thoughts exactly, sir. So what's a jar of trinkets going for these days? Normally, sir, they're 20 drachmas. But for you, how about 50? Sounds good to me. I'll take it. There you go, sir. Why, thank you. Pardon, monsieur. But just where do you think you are going? On board. <laughs> Monsieur is obviously making a little joke. No one, but no one, is allowed on board the SS Deadweight without a gold-edged, wax-sealed, expensively embossed, handwritten invitation. And do you have one of these, Monsieur? Not as such. Then I'm afraid, Monsieur, that you should make like a plane in the Bermuda Triangle and get lost. I can gather information about the deck party with this. Oh, by the way, your shoelace is undone. Nice try. However, if Monsieur were a little more observant, he would no doubt notice that I'm not wearing any shoes. Look, a meteorite is about to crash into the village. Monsieur is obviously getting a little desperate. Might I suggest he go home and take a little nap? Did I mention the deck chairs are sort of a hobby of mine? Perhaps I could just run up there and see what types are being used. Sorry, monsieur, but the deck chairs have been cleared away to create an entertaining dance floor. Interesting approach, though. I noticed that there was a party going on down at that big ship at the docks. But I understand you can only go if you were invited. That's true. In fact, I am going as soon as I get off work. Oh? So you got an invitation? I certainly did. It's really fancy-wancy one, too. Would you like to look at it? Why, yes. I would love to look at it. I'd like to purchase that fine stuffed kitty. All right, I'll get it for you. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Ah! Oh. Ah! Come on! Ah! 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 Oh, forget it. I can't sell you that cat. It's still alive. Did you hear that? Well, there it was again. Oh, not you again. 
How many times do I have to tell you? This is a private party, and without an invitation, you are not allowed to go on board. Oh, la la. The nerve of some people. You think they would... Yay! Let me see that. Sign, Russian Blue. Monsieur, we are ever so honoured to have you on board with us today. Please, feel free to come and go as you wish. Why, thank you. How gracious of you. What a weasel. I trust Monsieur will have an enjoyable visit. And if there is any way that I can lick some more of Monsieur's boots, I trust he will let me know. <laughs> but of course. So this is the deck party. Before I join the festivities, I should let Monkey Penny know I'm here. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Hi, Spy Fox. How's the mission progressing? I just made it onto the SS Deadweight. I'm going to take a look around. Good. Keep your eyes peeled for clues as to where William the Kid's secret fortress is. If Kid's fortress is so secret, how come we know about it? We're spies, Spy Fox. It's our job to know. And we are good at our jobs. Spy Fox out. Hello. You must be... Russian Blue. Noted socialite and attractive owner of the SS Deadweight. My name is Fox. Spy Fox. Would you care to dance, Miss Blue? I would love to, Mr. Fox. But there is only one dance on this planet I will dance to, and that is the tango. I love the tango. Do you know why I love the tango? That funky beat. Because it takes two to tango. Interesting. I haven't done the sums on that. I can gather information about Russian blue with this. I've never been involved in a wall snapping before. Hello, sweetheart. Welcome to the cantina. I'm Bear Bear. If there's anything you want, sugar, like, for example, sugar, you just let me know, all right? Thanks, Bear. So, you like playing the tango, do you? Oh, yeah. The tango really swings you crazy, cat. Plus, it's the only sheet music I have. Excuse me, what would you think about playing something a little slower for a change? Like I told you, man, I would if I could. So unless you've got some new sheet music for me, the tango extravaganza continues. Would you swap some of your tango music for some of my waltz music? Would I? I've been dying for some new tunes. Thanks. No, thank you. You're beautiful, baby. Don't go changing. Bayer, give this gentle fox a Brussels sprout fizz and put it on my tab. You don't have a tab, Johnny. Too bad. <laughs> 